Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? Thank you for pressing play out here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we are doing Manny and Maxie, Muse on Son of Sam. Yes, yes, yes. And who's Maxie? Well, of course, Maxie's our new, our new Siberian Husky. Isn't he beautiful? And where are we, of course? Well, we are behind the car residence. I wanted to bring up Maxie to the aqueduct to get the stain of all the dog killings and all of Berkowitz's bullshit to purify this place a little bit with this wonderful, wonderful creature. So we're, <laughs> so we're back here at the aqueduct. And this is just kind of an experimental stream. Uh, don't have... Um, anything particular to talk about just kind of wanted to come out here and see how this worked with him out on the trail and we're gonna see how far we can get come on maxi let's go so but i figured that i would use this opportunity to amuse a little bit on on son of sam and talk about the state of the case where we're at my thoughts on all the craziness that's ensued in the Son of Sam community, uh, my critique of Maury Terry and all that kind of stuff. So of course, what better place to do this than on the aqueduct, which is kind of where it all started for the cult theory. After all, it was uh, a 15 year old who met Maury Terry at Untermeyer Park and told him about the satanic cult that was meeting up there for quite some time. And of course, Maury immediately um, connected it to Son of Sam because he said that Berkowitz was in a cult, even though that was complete sham. And of course, Maury Terry, we don't know exactly what was in his mind, to be honest. Was he lying to us all on purpose? Was he himself fooled? Me personally, I think he was lying to us on purpose, mainly because we know now, 45 years later, after the fact, that the information he was using is the same exact information that we're using in our video series, the, the, the New York City police and detective files. And of course, me and my team, John Catalano, Book Club Warrior, all the great stalwarts that we have working for us and working with us, I should say. I always get for and with not exactly correct. Um, just doing a stellar job. And what are we doing? Well, we're not doing anything very controversial in my opinion. We're just simply taking Maury's words out of his book and comparing them to the police reports. <laughs> That's like literally all we're doing at this point. Um, yet, it's just crazy. People, people just cannot get through their heads that this is what we're doing. I mean, you know, one of the things that I got called or can continue to get called out here by the Maury Terry people is, uh, I'm a process member, I'm a, I'm a process anchor baby. I don't even know what that means. I think that's <laughs> part and parcel with the other bullshit that's going around about my father's the head of Operation Mockingbird and because he worked for Rubenstein Associates that somehow or other he's involved with Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, that's the musings of an insane, <laughs> of the insane asylum of the true crime world, right? People who should be like, in a rubber room somewhere because not only is it complete crap but literally nothing out there could uh, proves it um <laughs> it's crazy how these things start and it and it and it's part and parcel with my whole agenda to get conspiracy theory out of true crime it's ridiculous already this what people the the, the lengths people go to to justify their insanity Okay, Max, let's cross. Come on, guy. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Back this way. So we see the... Down here on Glenwood is... Uh, there's not Glenwood. Oh, yeah, it is Glenwood. Down there is where the uh, power plant is that you guys have seen. And, of course, we're heading up to Untermeyer Park. Another huge misunderstanding in Son of Sam. And just to uh, reiterate the whole Son of Sam phenomenon is one of nuance that Maury Terry, of course, rough, rough road over. 
with absolutely no, uh, <laughs> no, well, I'll just use the word again, no nuance whatsoever. Yes, there were cultists in Untermeyer Park. Yes, they were witnessed by numerous people in Yonkers. Yes, they were there, it's un unquestionable. But no, they had nothing to do with David Berkowitz, wigging out all the way down here on Pine Street, okay? So, anyway, uh, he's pulling me into the weeds here. I gotta actually kind of keep an eye on him, make sure he doesn't go into poison ivy. Maxie, say hello. When he's out on, uh, out on those, in the streets, he's all business, this guy. He is just all about business. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, we'll talk a little bit about him. So I'm just kind of riffing today. Don't have, like I said, don't have any exact topics. But uh, yeah, the conspiratards are um, just really rather gross and disgusting people. Mainly because they're just gullible, venal. I mean, the things they believe about me, right? That I'm a processed church member. Guys, I'm not a processed church member. I think the occult is the stupidest shit that you could possibly imagine in the entire world. It's ridiculous. Hold on, Maxie. What you got going on? And no, my father is not the head of Operation Mockingbird. He would absolutely think that you were the, the most insane person on planet Earth if you said that to him. Of course, I haven't even brought that up to him at all because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to upset the old guy. I mean, stupidest shit in the world. But that's the kind of stuff that passes for research, and people believe that stuff about me, um, my family. And uh, of course, that's why they're Terry heads still. Because they're not able to discern fantasy from reality. So, um, anyway, so back to the, uh, back to where the case is. So of course, it's now almost three years after we started our video series, walking this exact trail, that first video that we ever did. And of course, back then, huge conspiracy head I was, huge true crime conspiracy guy, and uh, conspiratard. I was a I was a tard. I believed Maury Terry, hundred percent. I believe there was a cult in Son of Sam, and of course, that's another insane thing that the see. In Son of Sam conspiracy world, you're not allowed to change your mind. You're not allowed to update your opinions or or, uh, or update your beliefs according to the evidence. In, in Son of Sam world, any evidence after 1987 is invalid in, 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 in Maury Terry world, right? It's like time stood still in 87 when that book came out. It was the complete truth. And that was all that we have to, to go on. And we could never update ourselves, even in the face of the fact that because of my video series, the Queen's DA files came out. And we had thousands and thousands of new pages to study. And there was a lot in there for Son of Sam researchers to, to go crazy about. Because all of a sudden we had all the answers we were looking for. Watch our Brooklyn series. Okay, John Catalano and I did at least six or seven videos on Brook the Brooklyn series. Each one of those videos is like over an hour and a half. And each one deals with looking at Maury Terry's timeline in The Ultimate Evil. And then we found the exact police reports he used to put together and cobble together that timeline. And we found that he changed dates, he cha I'm sorry, he changed times, he changed, uh, uh, well, times mainly, which is huge. He, cha he left out a lot of information. He manipulated information. We don't need to go through it now because you guys can watch our video series. Oh, I'm gonna give him some privacy. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about Maxi Boy. Like we're still, we only got him about a month ago. So we're still dealing with all his feeding schedules and his crapping schedules. And we have no clue what we're doing, to be honest. 
but we sure do love this guy. It took a while, honestly, it took like two weeks. I was actually having it, like that's one of the reasons why I haven't produced any videos in the last couple of weeks. And maybe some of you were wondering where I went. And the main reason was because we got this guy and he entered our life in with a, a huge bang. And um, I'm using back muscles I never even knew I had. I've lost seven to 10 pounds, haven't slept. But we had a breakthrough a couple days ago on the, our third week with him with uh, where everything just kind of clicked into place. And we absolutely love this guy to death. Um, it isn't to say we're gonna keep him forever because we live in a one bedroom. And uh, as you can see, he's like a wolf, this guy, right? He needs a life where he could like, where he could like run. I want him to be around cold weather. So I would love for him to live up north more. Look at all this bamboo, it's awesome. He loves being, he loves this type of, type of stuff. He loves being under, under things. So we're looking for ideal owners. And in the meantime, we're just loving the hell out of this guy. I mean, I'm like a clean freak. I'll say some things in this video that like I've never told anyone before uh, out in video land because, um, well, what's the point of talking about my, my uh, germophobism when I'm talking about Son of Sam? But today we're just musing, we're having a good time, kind of experimenting with a new format where it's just Maxie and Manny, we're musing. Musing with Maxie and Manny. And today we're musing on Son of Sam, the state of the case, my opinions on the conspiracy tards, the Son of Sam Terry heads, uh, the disgusting ways in which they treat all dissent and different opinions. And uh, so let's continue on with that. So yeah, so of course, um, we started out as huge uh, believers in the ultimate evil. That's just the narrative arc of our video series. I, a lot of people accuse me of, oh, Manny capitalized off of Josh Zeman's Netflix video. Uh, no, I didn't. I had no clue that the, that thing was even coming out when I started my video series. I started my video series two months before it came out. I hadn't a clue that it was, that it was being produced. But of course, as a smart producer, once I, once I got wind of it, I ramped up production because I knew all of a sudden all eyes were going to be on Son of Sam. That's called being a smart producer. It's not called being a... a <laughs> it's just like I want eyeballs on my stuff. Anybody would do the same thing who has a modicum of intelligence. So, of course, when we were do, telling the story of the ultimate evil, we were like the darling set, right? Everyone loved us. I had 20,000 subscribers. 700 paid su su supporters online. It was an amazing time in my life, I have to say. And um, a lot of people have come into the video series who have proven to be, well, very untrustworthy people, very backstabby people. We'll get into that in a little bit too. Um, but yeah, but we started on that narrative with, uh, with uh, Maury Terry's story and walking the streets of Yonkers and talking to the people because, you know, once we started in with this, and here's a Rose of Sharon hibiscus flower. Once we started, once we started talking to people out here because it quickly became a sociological study, an anthropological study, a, a study into Yonkers, a study into the stories about cults in Untermeyer Park, we realized that uh, it just didn't hold water. No one had ever heard of the 22 disciples of hell. No one ever heard of a son of Sam cult. Nobody saw David Berkowitz with them. Nobody knew David Berkowitz had his friends. The only sightings I got of David Berkowitz in the neighborhood were up on Lake Avenue, um, where he was just sitting alone after his midnight shift at the post office. And he would watch a pool game or something and maybe comment here and there on a pool game. But uh, another, another, um, eyewitness sighting we had a David Berkowitz in, in Yonkers was at some local bars uh, rapping to cops, talking to cops, and he was always alone. He never was with anyone. 
and he would talk about um, being an auxiliary cop and all that kind of stuff, which is of course true. And being an auxiliary cop, we never realized that's where he learned how to write the block lettering that later came out in the Son of Sam letters. It's amazing how simple the story really is. Uh, Maury Terry mucked it up with this international conspiracy crap, which could never be true because nobody's talked. Oh, that's right, Vinny talked. Guys, Vinny was Maury Terry, all right? Just like Maury Terry was Trudy Zeke, just like Maury Terry wrote the letter to himself supporting him about the Andrew Dupay suicide, Vinny was Maury Terry, okay? He just made that stuff up, sent himself a letter, <laughs> and then it got in the book as proof, and we all believed it. I mean, we, it, it's a fantasy land. Just like, of course, the fantasy of me being a Satanist, a process member, my father who was just an office worker. Well, he was not, he was a little more than an office worker. But essentially, he just did the public relations for the cops, firemen, and sanitation workers in New York City. Uh, that was his forte. Every now and then he worked with some higher profile people. Yes, he worked with Trump on some project out in New Jersey in some mall that he was doing. Yes, he worked with, uh, Harriman on some land deal that we're having in uh, upstate New York, Harriman Park, somewhere. I think, I'm not even sure what it was. But uh, believe me, he came home to the Bronx every night, <laughs> plopped himself in front of the television, and basically fell asleep by nine and started it all the next day. There were never shady people coming in and out of our house and all that kind of crap. And of course, People have looked him up, right? Oh, he was military intelligence. A million people were military intelligence back then. And I asked him about it. I said, what did that mean? He goes, all we did was survey roads in Korea and let, let the uh, people know. And this was in the 60s. So the Korean War was way over. And just let the army know where there were like routes here or there. I'm not even quite sure, but believe me, <laughs> there was absolutely nothing nefarious about it. It's been said my mom's a secret communist. It's ridiculous stuff. My parents are about the most hardcore Democrats you could possibly be and not communist Democrats. They're like, you know, old school people. But in either case, this really isn't about them. I don't need to justify them and who they are because of the musings of certain madmen online. Um, People went crazy about my video series. It was uh, quite a few people went nuts once I started questioning the theory of Maury Terry. And uh, that's another thing that pisses me off about this whole thing. What's up, Maxie? I'm gonna have to give him water soon. How you doing, guy? He, when he's out on the trail, he's all business, this guy. Like I said, he doesn't care about me. Although I gotta give him water fairly soon. We're gonna try to make it up to the aqueduct house. Oh, there's some new, there's some new graffiti. <laughs> so yeah, so once I started changing the narrative, it was just like what happened with COVID. Like when I was working at NYBG, I was like one of their best teachers. I had thousands of positive reviews, five star. There was like a whole following I had. They called themselves the Maniites. And then, but then as soon as I talked about Bill Gates buying farmland, I became Hitler, right? As soon as I wouldn't wear a mask, I became Hitler. So the Son of Sam community, the Maury Terry asp, uh, the faction of the Son of Sam community was, this, was the same way as the Covidians. As soon as I changed the, na the narrative and realized that the whole thing Maury Terry was talking about was shit stained bullshit, um, all of a sudden I became process member, Satanist. And what's crazy is these people actually believe it with absolutely no proof, they just believe it. I mean, the things that people believe about me, what are they saying? Oh, I live with my, I, my girlfriend pays for my, <laughs> my way, and I live with my girlfriend, but don't, don't pay her half the expense, and don't, I live for free. Well, if you saw my bank account, you wouldn't realize that that's complete bullshit. Um, <laughs> they say that I don't have any business and that I don't work. No, I, I lost quite a bit of work during the COVID, haven't made up even a, a fifth of it. And so I still have quite a bit of time on my hands. 
uh, luckily I charge such a high hourly rate for the work that I do do, that I'm perfectly fine economically. I have, no, I have really very little worries about it. People say I drive a crappy car, uh, I drive a 2006 Honda CRB. It's, it's anything but crappy. It's not the newest model, but it's uh, not a crappy car. And, um, you know, all of these rumors and stuff were started by ex-partners of mine, uh, but who, whose names start with N. And what's crazy is people believe this stuff whole cloth and no one ever thinks to get my side of the story. Right? No one's ever asked Manny. We hear all these things. What, what's your side of the story? Right? If I could tell the story of Carl DeNaro and all these people like uh, John Mitchell, right? If I could actually tell these stories, you would hear, well, things that uh, might run count, co contradictory to the way that you feel about a guy like Carl, right? There's a reason why I call him a bad guy, an enemy of Son of Sam Truth, and just a bad guy in general. I'm not going to get into it because I really can't. But uh, Carl has taken advantage of the, the fact of that I, can, I can't talk about certain things. And he, has, and he took advantage of that to spread false rumors about me as well. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just musing on the state of the Son of Sam case. But get, let's get back to the case and not about me. And, these, uh, and, and the moron factions, the Terry heads. Because it's really unbelievable at this point. The amount of information that these people ignore is, is voluminous. It's like a mountain of information that they ignore. Let's, let's, let's talk about a few things. Because I always, whenever these people question me and call me a Satanist and a process member, first of all, that's hurtful. I'm a human being, right? Like I'm just like a normal human being who just picked up this camera to try to like bring you guys this story. I never meant to be a controversial figure in Son of Sam. You guys made that happen. Those of you who, who, hate, who hate my message and my guts, I didn't make that happen. All I did was follow the evidence and tell you truthfully what the hell was really going on in this case. But the things that these people have to ignore is legion. They have to ignore, well, the fact that Maury completely made up Cecilia Davis's testimony that Berkowitz drove away, right? That never happened, guys. Berkowitz did not drive away from the Brooklyn scene. It's a fantasy. They have to ignore, um, right? Like the Freund shooting. They have to ignore the fact that we found these police reports on the green and red auto and it had nothing to do with a cult. They have to ignore the fact that we found all the wine gallery reports and there were no suspicious uh, people in there whatsoever. No sandy-haired, suspicious people with parted hair in the middle. I mean, none of this stuff. They have to ignore the fact that Maury Terry literally changed times in the Brooklyn scene in order to make his uh, timeline fit. They have to ignore the fact that uh, Berkowitz had a part in his hairstyle, just like in the Lomino de Masi sketch. They have to ignore all the Lomino de Masi police reports that show the guy was wearing a brown coat, not a green coat, right? And there was no mention of a left hand or any of that type of stuff. Um, I mean, I can go on and on. They have to ignore the fact that Berkowitz actually wrote the Son of Sam letters and that Charles Hamilton, the uh, handwriting expert that Maury Terry used to prove his point was a complete and abject fraud. Okay, I mean, we're finding this stuff out now. The reason why is because we're asking the right questions. Okay? I just read a recent comment about my methodology about how I use no logic and how I don't do any research. That's another thing that goes on, that I don't do research. Well, who the fuck does the research then? I'd like to know. Yes, me and Book Club and John Catalano are doing this research together. Um, <laughs> I give them full credit for it. Uh, but I'm in there too, guys, <laughs> right? Who's putting the shows together? I mean, and then I don't use logic? Bitches, all I'm doing is using logic. I'm showing you what Maury wrote in his book, and then I'm comparing it to the actual police and detective files that, that exist in the real world. With, they're the things that we could actually touch in our hands. They're not imaginary, okay? 
and uh, come on, guy. And uh, I'm gonna stop and give him water when we hit the shade in a little bit. We'll see how that goes. So it's like the things you guys have to ignore in order to keep your fantasies going. And what is your fantasy? Let's, let's think about this. More, uh, Berkowitz, somehow or other, met eggs in 1967, which, by the way, we've disproved, um, who was friends with John Carr, who, by the way, that never happens. Um, but wait a second, then he was supposed to meet Mike Carr in 1975, right? So, so which one was it? How did he join this cult? Right? Who were the members of this cult? I mean, Maury Terry had Berkowitz hanging out with Roy Cohn. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous stuff. And let me tell you something about how that all went, went down. I'll, um, give me a second, because I want to I wanna give this guy some water. Maxie, I'm going to put this down. Maxie, come here. Maxie, come here, boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Here, trick water. Drink. Good boy. Keep drinking. Good guy. Keep drinking. Good guy. All right. Give me a second, Maxie, please. I'm about to talk about Rothstein. Detective Martin Boots, Jimmy, Jimmy Rothstein. All right, let's go, Maxie, let's go. All right, whoops. So, you know, it's often thought like, well, where did Maury go off the rails? Well, he went off the rails in the 70s because first he was talking about the cosmic police and then he was talking about the way he was having wheat car in a diner talking about mass murder while Perlman was there. I mean, that was his first theory. And then a 29 year old researcher Siegel comes along and starts talking about the process and then all of a sudden the, the way became the, the process. I mean, it's total horseshit. But, um, so that's where he really went off the rails. And then, of course, he had access to the police files in the late 70s, somehow or other, he got them. And then he started manipulating all that information, juicing it. And again, watch my material. Watch every show I've ever done where I show you the police files, I show you what Maury wrote, and I show you how he just basically lied to us. But he went off the rails in the 90s. And um, Jimmy Boots, Martin Rothstein, was responsible for that. Now... I want to say, before I go on this little tangent about Jimmy Boots, Mayor, his honor, Jimmy Ro Boots Rothstein, um, that I actually respect the guy, I like the guy, I have no problem with him personally, and um, I have no problem with him personally, let's let these people go. Let my people go! But uh, he doesn't know the first thing about Son of Sam, this guy, and he's admitted it to me, he said on tape. I didn't investigate Son of Sam. But what he did investigate were these child trafficking networks. And uh, I believe he was onto some good stuff. Ace Brown, the Untermeyer Park to 42nd Street connection, the Van Cortland Park to 42nd Street connection, all that kind of stuff was valuable work that Jimmy Rothstein did. But then what happened was he comes into Yonkers in the 90s after meeting Maury Terry and now all of a sudden, Maury Terry is asking David Berkowitz if he knew Shelley Sidon and, and, and Steve London and Mikey Muscles and all of these people from Operation Together and the Gay Underground. And Berkowitz is just saying, yeah, yeah, I know them. Yeah, yeah, I party with Roy Cohn. So Rothstein comes into Yonkers, fills Maury's head with all sorts of horseshit. Maury believes it, and then now all of a sudden that's why we have child trafficking networks in Son of Sam. How the hell was David Berkowitz involved with child trafficking networks? I mean, are you, are you kidding me? Guys, we need to be better than this. We need to be smarter than this. And of course, you who are my fans and who are my supporters, you are. We're on a whole different level. We have an understanding of this case that's beyond deep. 
we understand that Berkowitz was <laughs> talking about his motivations to Abrahamson in these voluminous amounts of letters, thousands of letters. And yes, I choose to believe those letters. If you don't, hey, all I can say to you is, well, show me the proof that he's lying. He talks about his family. He talks deep, knowledge, deep memories about his uncle Lou and all this stuff that happened to him as his child, uh, stuff that I've confirmed with his friends. So it's like, I, it's like he, it's, you know, things that he talked about later on in killer tapes and his own words. So the Abrahamson letters really are the key to this whole puzzle. Um, he talks about why he did it, how he did it. Um, he talks about uh, roaming all over the city in his car and keeping his car in tip-top shape. He talks about all the guns that he bought, his hatred of women, his hatred of his mother, um, not, you know, not, not love, liking his life because he was an accident and he wasn't wanted and wanting revenge on the world because of that. You know, all this type of stuff he was talking about. But Martin Boots Rothstein, because he, he came into Yonkers and filled Maury's head with bullshit, 30 years later, people are still parroting that bullshit. And that's another thing that happened in this Son of Sam community. Before I came along, the only games in town was Ed Opperman, as, or as I call him, Ed Flopperman. The guy's a douchebag, a complete jerk off. When I, when I became popular, when I first became popular in Son of Sam, I'm gonna stop here, because I, I, I want these people to go. Let's say hi to Maxie. Maxie. Hey, guy. Hey, Max, say hi. Say hi to the people. Say hi to the people of the world. Uh, he's giving you his, his anus. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was talking about. Um, that's, what, that's one of the great things about this dog, by the way. He gets my mind off the darkness, off the cultic stuff. Not that I, you know, you know what I mean. He gets my mind off this dark, true crime shit. And uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've actually needed that quite, quite a lot because I have to say, it hurts to be, to be unfairly criticized. I wish people would criticize me about my work. I wish people would engage my work uh, rather than call me names. I mean, it'd be one thing if they were true, but you know, people are saying I live with my, I, I sponge off my girlfriend and I drive a crappy car and I don't use logic in my work and that I'm a handled by people and I have a, I have orders. I mean, how do you, how do you argue about, against that other than to say it's not true, right? But then these people are gonna believe whatever they want because they still believe that Billy the Artist sketched Mr. Real Estate in Untermeyer Park, who was directing the Son of Sam crimes. Oh, there's this emergency alert. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There was some emergency alert and even that the conspiracy tards Heads were like, oh, it's a conspiracy. There's an emergency alert today at 2 p.m. Guys, I gotta say, you you and the Terry camp, you're really making fools. <laughs> you're really making fools of yourself. It's ridiculous. But um, but Rothstein was I talking about Rothstein? Oh yeah, Ed Flopperman. That's right. When I first became popular in 2021. I got an email from Ed Flopperman asking to be on my show and asking to be on his show. Sorry, he wanted to interview me. In fact, he was like, oh, I want to interview you so bad. The guy was like on my dick like you wouldn't believe. And then uh, what I did was I, I actually didn't feel ready. See, people think I'm some egomaniac, right? But I actually told Ed and I have all the emails to prove this. I'm not going to show them because they're still private. I don't really feel the need to expose this guy so badly. But I wrote him a very nice email back. I said, listen, Ed, I'm not ready. All I know is the ultimate evil. I, I, you, all you're going to do is get another interview from a guy who read the ultimate evil. It's not interesting. Why don't we stay friends? I wrote him. That's what was my exact words. Let's stay friends. And in a couple weeks, I'll call you when I feel like I know you know more that I could be on your show and be better. And then I get back a reply saying that he doesn't want to ever hear from me again because I worked with Jason Goodman. Now, I can understand people not wanting to work with me because of Jason Goodman. I got a lot of, a lot of shit for working with Jason because Jason was the first person to put into my head that Maury Terry wasn't on the level. Uh, 
And you know, God bless Jason for that, because it turned out he was absolutely right. People were telling me to dump that guy, to drop him like a bad habit. I, was, I stuck loyal to Jason. Uh, Jason got me through the beginning of the pandemic with his walk and talks. And um, I felt like I had become friends with him through his video series. People said that we knew each other beforehand or were Mossad agents together. I mean, it's total ridiculous. That's another thing about Son of Sam community, the Terry Head factions, bunch of racists and anti-Semites. They call, they call my uh, um, Italian friends, they call them anti-Italian slurs. They make, they call me a process anchor baby as if Puerto Ricans aren't citizens. I mean, they're the dumbest people, really. But uh, the only game in town when I came around was Ed Flopperman. And Ed Flopperman had turned Rothstein into a hero of Son of Sam. Hey, come here, look, guy, there's water. Right? I was the first person to come out and be a, a, a heretic against that and say, hey, maybe Rothstein doesn't really know much about Son of Sam. You know, he's sitting here talking about Marita Lorenz and Watergate and, and uh, being in, uh, uh, behind enemy lines in, the, in East Germany. I mean, this guy was everywhere, according to him. But he didn't really seem to know much about, about Son of Sam. Um, and if you go back, I, I challenge anyone, sorry, I'm just fi figuring out this stuff here. I challenge anybody to go back and listen to those interviews of Rothstein from the, from the, from the 2010s. They're pathetic. He never gets to the fucking point. And so when I started working with Rothstein, I said to Eric, who was his friend, get this guy on point. He's all over the place. And quite frankly, we made a bunch of tapes with him. And uh, I had to edit them down so severely because again, it was all about, uh, oh yeah, you gotta understand, they do that shit. You know, he just like speaks in these vague generalities. And uh, I've come to the conclusion that Rothstein's a crank, just like Hen Detective Chinati is, a, is mentally ill. <laughs> right? <laughs> Maury Terry just never gave us this, these, these contexts, uh-oh. We're here at the, at, the, at the aqueduct, and it looks like people have drawn over the 44. The 44 is being destroyed. Someone named, I can't write, read that. Let me see if I can, we can see the I's and the Z's. The, yeah, they're up there, we can see that. So that's what we're talking about with the I's and the Z's. I think Berkowitz drew those. He was, after all, an avid rock climber. He could get up there. I think those are his victims and Leslie Zarrett. I could be wrong. It was Mike Lorenzo who first hit me to that. He could be wrong, but it seems to make sense. Anyway, the Weir House looks like it's, it's, uh, we're losing our old school graffiti of the world. The 44s up there are still there though. Anyway, so we're gonna head back now, Maxie. Let's see what he's doing. So yeah, I know I'm all over the place in this video, guys. Um, my apologies for that. I'm being distracted by not having a real message, not having a real topic. Also dealing with this dog who I'm kind of trying to keep my, my eye on. Let's say hello, Maxie. 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 You're so good, guy. You're so good. We love this guy, Death. What a good person, what a good dog he is. Just absolutely, look how, look how beautiful he is. It's an absolutely gorgeous animal. Come on, Maxie, we're gonna walk back this way. Come on, this way, guy. So yeah, so, I'm gonna basically go until we run out of batteries. I'm kind of having an issue with the stabilizer here. I don't know what's going on. Let me see if I can fix this. Let me turn it off and turn it back on again. We're gonna go, we're gonna drop for a second. Now I'm gonna turn this back on. 
I was making sure that my boy Max out. Oh, there we go. Now we're stable again. Good. All right. So yeah, so um, I just wanted to address a few things about how disappointed I am in the Maury Terry faction. Um, every time I challenge them to debate on the actual issues, I never get a response. I ask them in comment sections, how do you feel about the fact that Maury Terry changed the beautician's report about the yellow VW? He didn't tell us that it happened 10, 15 minutes after the shooting, right? How do you, I asked them, how do you feel about the Alan Masters VW chase that actually happened at five minutes to three, a full 25 minutes after the shooting, right? It's crickets. These people love to hit and run. It's like, oh yeah, you're a Puerto Rican communist Jew who's a Satanist process member who, uh, whose father is uh, the head of Operation Mockingbird and who handled Jeffrey Epstein's account for Rubenstein Associates. I mean, that's what I get back. I mean, there's just no way in hell to, 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 that you can even deal rationally with that kind of insanity. So I don't, I just make fun of it. But I'm actually quite disappointed because people who can generally write, who can string two sentences together, like Jack Myers, he won't deal with the fact that he has a fake picture of Berkowitz's wall in his book. Uh, yet every time in, his comment sec in my comments section, he's telling me how wrong I am about everything. Having done no research himself into the actual police files like, that we have, that we've done. So I'm quite disappointed in the Maury Terry fans. I think you guys are scum, actually. There's not that many of you left. Uh, we've completely have dominated the Son of Sam space. So the only people who are doing um, <laughs> conspiracy stuff in Son of Sam are like these idiots uh, lumped up, right? And if you saw the private messages that these people send each other about me, first of all, they're very homoerotic. They all deal with my ass and, and gay stuff. It's just really strange. The, this guy, Rocker Mike, talks about wanting to... Uh, you know, talking about my girlfriend in a very disgusting way. I have all these screenshots saved. If anyone ever wants to challenge me and prove it, I can just show them to you in a second. I'll just mail them to you privately. <laughs> talking about wanting to fight me. Talking about me being a Riverdale boy. I'm a Riverdale boy. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> I loved growing up in Riverdale. It was one of the greatest childhoods ever. Because um, Riverdale is a great community. Close to the woods close to the city. Couldn't have asked for anything more. There's no pride in growing up in a bad neighborhood and being hard, right? And it's, it's no pride in that. Um, so yeah, so it's just a bunch of venal characters with no integrity and who love to lie. <laughs> That's basically it. And then they project their bullshit on me. Um, when, when in the meantime, I always tell people, fact check the hell out of me. You have access to the same materials that I use, right? I'm, I don't have any secret stuff, right? I'm not holding anything back. I use the same Queen's DA files that you do. So if you feel that those files prove the cult theory, then where's the videos on it? Where, where's the detailed work on it? Yeah, I see these mouth-breathing fatsos and, 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 and homophobes on Lumped Up talking about Dionysus and the Son of Sam letters, but then they show you absolutely no proof. Like, they show you no backup material. Well, they're not capable of it, first of all. I mean, face it, guys, you just don't have my talent, style, pizzazz, elan, production skills, uh, cinematography uh, 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 abilities. I mean, and, and hopefully that's not coming off sounding Con, uh, conceded. It's just the facts. You also don't have the support system that I do of all the law enforcement that loves my work all over the world, I might, I might add, and who support me and what I'm doing. Because they realize that we're the only Son of Sam game in town with actually integrity. We're intellectually honest. We don't lie. If we did, it would be very easy to find out our lies because we have a million people trying to, trying to say that I'm a liar, but never, never has anybody actually come out with proof. Um, and like I said, fact check our work. That would be the best thing. So again, I'm putting out the call. Any Maury Terry fan wants to come on my show, 
I'll even do this. I'll come on your show and we'll debate the case. Try to keep your homophobia out of it. Try to keep your anti-Semitism out of it. Try to keep your jealousy about my skills out of it and your projection out of it. And let's just deal with the case, right? Let's, let's debate Brooklyn, okay? Um, we've been to that scene. Okay, let's debate it. Let's talk about it. It's the only way that we're ever going to come to an agreement between the communities, the various factions. Now, you may not want that. I actually want that. I actually wanted to be friends with everybody, be positive, um, you know, be cool with everyone. Uh, but it just wasn't to be. I had too many weirdos working, working with me who proved to be uh, untrustworthy. Jason Goodman was run, run out, out by Neo. That, was, that whole thing was the cross on the tree. When, when, we, uh, when, I, when, when I discovered the cross on the tree, um, me, Neo, and Jason were having discussions about how to bring that to the public's attention. And we had a meeting and we agreed that we wouldn't say anything. Jason was gonna spend a couple days trying to find ground penetrating radar. And we were gonna go in there ourselves and try to find bones. I mean, ridiculous when you think about it in reality. But that's actually what we were planning. And we had all agreed, me, Neo, and Jason, to not do anything except let Jason have his couple days to do what he needed to do. And I agreed, Neo agreed. Anyway, the next day Neo goes and tells the cops and the cops get involved. And that made Jason extremely livid. Jason blamed me. And then all of a sudden I became a man of no integrity. <coughs> and Jason just stopped talking to me. So that happened a couple of years ago and I never made a big deal about it or made any public announcements, but that's the story. I mean, you know, this guy Neo goes around talking all sorts of smack. He's lying to you. <laughs> I don't know what else, else to put it. And then Carl, bad guy, Carl knows what, exactly what he did and how he manipulated the situation to make me look like a bad guy. I'm not even going to get into it. He knows what's up. And, um, I mean, Eric recently, <laughs> I didn't, so what happened with Eric, because everyone's been asking, where's Eric, right? So Eric, I loved Eric. You know how many people told me to ditch Eric because they couldn't stand him? They said, Manny, that guy is just a fake British accent. He's a blowhard. He's a conspiracy theorist. And I would tell all of them, yeah, but you know what? I love Eric. He's my friend and I'm loyal to him. And I actually find him quite entertaining, quite fun to do shows with on camera. And he was excellent during the Alfred Hunt Howell series and the Dome series. I mean, unbelievable stuff this guy did behind the scenes. And uh, after the Dome series ended, we had t I had taken so much heat from the Riverdale establishment, people getting angry at me for talking about the Dodge family, that uh, I needed a mental break. That's one thing people don't realize about me. I'm a human being with emotions and I need a break every now and then because it gets too intense. So I told Eric I was taking a break. I didn't call him for a week or two. And the next thing I know, he's emailing people saying I betrayed him and that I abandoned him. And so I realized, wow, that's very girl-like behavior. That's like jealous girlfriend type stuff. And I just, I just kind of ditched him at that point. I never called him again. And then I hear that... Uh, He's going around acting very silly and strange on the forums. And I have my eye on all of it. It's so stupid. It's just so dumb, childish behavior. Like, look at this dog. This dog doesn't care about that, right? This beautiful creature just wants to smell and sniff and not have drama. He's here on the aqueduct doing his thing, ignoring Poppy, pretending I don't exist. It's just like the Maury Terry fans. <laughs> so anyway, um, we should all just try to be more like this dog, right? More zen-like, more chill. And I, I'm talking about myself too. I get caught up in drama. I enjoy fighting people sometimes. I, I, I like most of you out there, I love being right. I, I feel quite a need to be right. Maybe that has to do with my upbringing, which I don't need to get into, of course. 
But uh, yeah, we all come with our strengths and we all come with our weaknesses. And um, I feel like I've been very transparent with everybody. And uh, you know, maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Does it even really matter? You're not here to know about me and my life. You're here to know about the case and what we're all learning. And of course, what have we learned? Well, we learned that Dave Berkowitz had friends growing up, had relationships, went to the army, somehow or other got destroyed in the army, came back, went on this nihilistic phase where everyone hated him and he withdrew, probably under the influence of drugs. No, not MK Ultra. Give me a break, guys. And uh, he had no friends. He had no prospects. He hated his life. He hated his job. He got pissed off at his biological mother. He had misophonia. He couldn't stand loud noises. And it all came together in this, in this head called Son of Sam, where this psychotic motherfucker just went out and just started killing people to satisfy his own inner, inner rage and desires. And there's really nothing more complex about it. He made up this whole complex uh, um, story about the Wicker Street cult and the car gang and all this stupid stuff that he said happened on Wicker Street, which was just the figment of his imagination. And in fact, probably was made up to feign an insanity defense. Because as we can see from his writings, he was extremely intelligent, great writer, creative mind, um, even a good poet. This guy could have been something. And it's really, really sad that uh, innocent lives had to be paid for his psychotic delusions. But, you know, it really is an insult at this point to those of you who are in the Maury Terry camp to keep on with this stupid claptrap of cult involvement in Son of Sam. You're insulting yourself, first of all, and your own intelligence because the shit didn't exist. <laughs> Prove to me that it existed using your own research not Maury's words out of a book, okay? Not some article that Peter Lavenda wrote. Got another, another joker who knows nothing about this case. Maybe a nice guy personally, but he doesn't know about this case. Um, and even worse than that, you're insulting... Sorry, Maxie, I stepped on, his, stepped on his leash. Even worse than that, you're insulting the memories of the victims and the victims' families because they were all shot by Disco Dave Berkowitz. There was nobody else involved, okay? And uh, the sooner you realize that, the sooner you can get to the real interesting parts of the case, which is his motivations, his life growing up, his life after the army, um, and, his, and his incredibly disturbing crime spree in Yonkers, which, really gets a lot of short shrift in, in the ultimate evil and uh, which our video series has concentrated more more about. So anyway guys, I think I'm gonna leave it here because the battery's running out and I want to actually pay some attention to my dog. Um, he's been great. He doesn't care. Look, you're in poison ivy. No, no, no. He, he's amazing, this dog. He, he like understands English. He knows poison ivy already and he will gladly go away from it when I say poison ivy. So, um, yeah, I wanna spend a little time with my dog. So anyway, I wanna say uh, thank you for joining me here on this little stream of consciousness. Uh, we didn't really get into, any, into anything new, but we talked about my feelings, about where we are in this case and uh, where we are in true crime and just how disgusted I am at these people who, you know, criticize me on the issues. Like, you know, you don't need to make up lies about my family and about me personally in order to justify your hate. Um, what I would do is I would turn that hate into positivity and try to uh, learn a thing or two from the person who's trying to teach you. I'm not coming at this with bad motivations. I haven't made a dime in almost, in almost a year and a half from this, from this case. I do this all for free because I enjoy it. It's my hobby. And I enjoy working with people like John Catalano, Gary, Book Club, 
all of my contacts still in law enforcement who I keep in touch with. It's very satisfying to be working with people who are professional and who are serious and who take, you, who take me seriously. And really, that's all I can ask for at the end of the day. So anyhow, I want to say goodbye to you. And uh, we'll see you on some live streams coming up. And um, this dog is dominating my life now. So you're going to be seeing him more. And uh, hopefully we'll have some interesting topics for you. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Not quite sure where I'm at in life now. But uh, in either case, I wanted to get back out on the aqueduct and, and just reconnect with you guys a little bit. So I hope you're all doing well. And uh, hope we all stay friends as we continue down the road of the Son of Sam. <laughs>